Mr. Emerald Lagasse, by the way, hey, he's in disguise right now, like me. Two yeah. levers think alike. Uh, that's exactly right. And uh, we had no idea. We didn't plan this. We didn't talk about this. But here we are. I can't believe it. I walk in. You got a beard. I walk in with a beard. We haven't seen each other since probably five or six months. Yeah. So, Emerald, you do all these different charity events. You, you know, we know how much you give in New Orleans and all that. But you have it with with Carnival de Ben and Boudin and Beer and all that. Do you have any more than that in, in New Orleans? I just, Sammy. I just came off a plane literally a few hours ago. Uh, with Chef Chris, my wife, Alden. We had Line, Vine, and Dine, which we were so happy that you kicked it off last year. Oh, the same thing I did last yep, year, yeah. In Fort Lauderdale. So we just got in here, uh, 50th anniversary for Bacchus, here we go. But, so, how can you roll for six days? You gotta have three more days to go now. You just went well, three. Well, tomorrow's Lundi Gras, uh -huh. so uh, we're gonna do a little, little stuff together, you and me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna come here and put together a lunch for you and uh, to take with you. And then uh, Mardi Gras day, I'm, I'm exiting. I'm, I'm exiting. Are you gonna go on yeah. Lent? What are you gonna I'm, give up? I'm going home. But, oh, I'm going home. <laughs> so you're gonna give up partying? Right, for a day. <laughs> for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, Emerald, it's always a pleasure eating your food. You know, that's how we That's how we That's how we, that's how we roll. That's how that's we, how we roll, a long time ago. I met ago. him at his first restaurant. And a great cook, let and me tell you. we've been friends ever since, but uh, thanks for all the good stuff you're doing, and thanks for uh, turning me on to Mardi Gras okay, here. Let me show you this here. When you hang with him, well, that's breakfast. So uh, we're going to have some food and then we're going to head on over to the convention center. Yeah, see what the floats are doing, right? That's it. Come on. 50th anniversary. This is big. Oh, it's going to be bigger than normal? Big. <laughs> and the Big Easy? Big, the Bigger big. Easy. We're going to call it the Bigger they Easy. just got bigger. They're getting ready for uh, the big parade. One of them. One of the many big parades. And uh, my buddy Emeril Lagasse and uh, Chris Wilson, his head chef and right hand man, are gonna meet us down here. And I was supposed to be on the float with them, but after getting on the float and seeing them last night, all the party is in the streets. So I'm gonna follow their float in the streets. And I'm gonna party with the people, we'll see how long I last. I may end up jumping on their float as a getaway. I'm looking <laughs> as a sanctuary. All right, let's go find those guys. Sir, how are you, man? Uh, no way, no way. That's a mighty he, he runs the whole shebang, let me tell you. How Good you friend. Good Absolutely. Man. This thing is unrunnable. Oh, that's <laughs> so we're going to go to our flight. Now, hey, we got the inside job now. We're going to see what you don't get to see. Whoa! So what's happening here is all of these guys, all these guys are loading their floats which they have all started to do weeks ago. So we didn't get on their float. I can't believe it. Where's, which one's yours? We're, We're going to show you in a second. Hey, are you seeing this? This is crazy. Look at this. How you doing, brother? brother? Happy Mardi Gras, man. Hey. Hey. Happy Mardi Gras. Hey. Look at this cooler right here. Look at this right here. <laughs> okay, we gotta go. We'll see you, wow. see you tonight. I've never seen anything like that. I've never Herb, seen anything like that. Herb, get out here. Come on over here. And you love it. You'll love it. These guys are pulling out of here like a caravan from a rock concert, like 18 trucks. There's more than that. There's hundreds of thousands of people in these floats alone. This is the biggest party on the planet. Mardi Gras number 50, baby. Woo! Yeah, Sammy Hagar, baby. All right, now we've been backstage. Now let's take this party to the street. My buddy Emerald's float was a toast of the town. But next, get ready to sit down with another New Orleans icon. Hey, we are here, man, where Trombone Shorty does all this stuff. 
I think he just bought this studio. It's called Fudge. A guy named Shane Thoreau used to own it. And uh, they made a lot of funk coming down in Fudge, man. I'm telling you. Woo. Let's go uh, check this guy out. He's a damn genius. The latest and the greatest. Hey, welcome to another Rock World Road Trip. I'm Sammy Hagar, and uh, I have a very special situation here because I'm in New Orleans. I just went to the Mardi Gras, and I'm sitting here with the new New Orleans legend. I mean, we're talking in the footprint of Alan Toussaint. We're talking Dr. John, the Night Trip, the Neville Brothers, and then we have the latest and the greatest, Mr. Trombone Shorty. And this is an honor for me to be here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Trombone Shorty. Yeah. How the hell did you get a name like that? <laughs> Well, you know, in New Orleans, everyone has a nickname. So I've started playing when I was four years old in the street funerals and jazz parades and different things. And my brother called it out, Trombone Short, and it made the, next, the newspaper the next day, and it stuck with me ever since. Yeah, because you're not that short. Not anymore. I expect this little old guy to come walking in here. <laughs> Everybody suspects that, yeah. <laughs> well, why, when you were, were a kid, here you are, three, four, five years old, what made you, you like the music? But what made you pick trombone? Well, my brother plays the trumpet, and I don't think we need any more trumpet players in the family at that time. So uh, he was very influenced by Louis Armstrong, who always had a sidekick trombone. And so I was that for him for a very long time. And then during that time, I learned a bunch of other instruments. What a trip, because to me, thinking about growing up, I guess because you grew up in New Orleans, I'm just guessing this, because where I grew up, you know, I started wanting to play music. I wanted to be Elvis Presley, or I wanted to play guitar and be the front man and singing and all that stuff. I didn't even ever think about playing a horn my whole life. So here, I mean, did you want to be rich and famous and all that? And, and Well, you... I think just growing up here, we're surrounded by music all day. I'm pretty sure you're driving around in the city. There's music at the bus stops. There's people playing music outside the house. There's always music in the city. That's the heartbeat. And uh, I don't think we ever thought about being rich or famous. Only thing we know how to do is play music here. So as long as we, because we didn't play music in every occasion, if it was a funeral or somebody's house or a birthday party or second lines up and down the street or playing on stage in front of thousands of people at the jazz fest, we just loved to play music. So it was never about, uh, I don't even think we knew that we can be famous. Wow. We just knew that we could play music. When did that come into the fold? When you say, hey, this is working, I can probably make a living, and I kind of like it. Well, you know, at, at seven, I was already touring. At seven? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Troy, oh, you killing know, me. My brother wow. took me on tour since I was seven to Europe every summer. We'll go Every time I got out of school, I'll play all these festivals with him around the world, and he would pay me and teach me how to count the money and split up the band, and then I created my own band based off of him of guys my age at the time. So by the time I was seven, I had my own band. How about Jazz Fest so now? Maybe, maybe the youngest guy to headline Jazz Fest? Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know how old the Neville Brothers were when they took well, over. Well, it but, could be, yeah. They... <laughs> yeah. Because I grew up playing with the Neville Brothers on that stage every year, and myself and Cyril Neville's son, Omari Neville, would be like, man, they should put us in the band and let us take over. <laughs> and then we forgot that we said that, and now here I am closing out the Jazz Fest. And, uh, but I've been on that stage since I was in my early teens, so wow. I was ready for the moment. Yeah, I heard a story about you being on the Neville's bus when you were like eight years old or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, I was on a bus with uh, the Neville's. They took me on tour. The whole tour all across the country? The whole summer tour, I went out and played with them. We were playing at the uh, House wow. of Blues and different places. And I guess that was probably one of the, the first big tours I've been on. Besides with my brother. What about your mom and dad? What do they think about that? The only time they were uh, concerned is when I joined Lenny Kravitz's band in 82. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go my way? Yeah. So, wow. So How she had to talk. I, I just finished high school at 18, and that's when she was like, I see this man on TV. Is it anything like those MTV uh, videos or whatever I see on TV? And she had to talk to him, but it was nothing like what it used to be like. So it was easy yeah. for me. Who were the guys? that you looked up to, being a trombone player? I think I was more into guitar player, listening to uh, Hendrix, and uh, got a chance to play with uh, Jeff Beck a few times. I was always looking at different things that was outside of the trombone and try to imitate those sounds on my horn, because that was more challenging to me. Wow. But if I had to pick a trombone player that I was really listening to at the time, it'd probably be uh, Fred Wesley from James Brown Band. I know, Fred. Did you read that book? 
I didn't read the book. You have yet, to read the book. Really, oh, no, you have to. I'm good it. friends with him, but I have to read that book. But I was always more into maybe trumpet players, uh, Louis Armstrong. I was always trying to just imitate those type of things. You just did a Chili Peppers tour. Now, yeah. those guys are so quirky and so... I mean, that's a strange band. Dear friends, you know, Chad <laughs> Smith, we have a, a band together called Chicken Foot. You know? mm -hmm. Chad, one of the best rock drummers on the planet. Um, so what do you learn like when you sit there? Do you watch those guys every night? Or yeah, I watch them every night. You know, the music is very similar to what we do here. Based, you know, both of us are influenced by the meters. But yeah. I think with us, we have, uh, it's just horns, but we go out there and rock as hard as we could. And it was a great fit for us. And uh, I can say with the Chili Peppers, at certain moments during the show, you didn't know if it was their show or our sh if it was our show or not. So the people loved it, and, and everywhere I go now, when we go on tour, there's at least a large percentage of people wearing a Chili Pepper shirt. <laughs> so it, it worked out for us well. So I have this little thing where I like to get to know. It's uh, time of the show here where we're about to check out and go into playing some music, but mm -hmm. um, it's called This or That, and the idea is that you're not supposed to say both. Okay. One or the other. It's, it's hard, though. I, I, it's, this is hard. It's already hard. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't supposed to be, but sometimes it is. Okay. Okay. James Brown or Ray Charles? Oh, man. Do I have to pick? See. <laughs> See. You don't have to. You can say, I, I can't do it. You I can't. Can I really can't do that one because that's my, I, uh, both of those guys, I, I study them all the time. James Brown and Ray Charles. If you watch my show live, you'll see a lot of both of them in there. So how about we call it uh, Ray Brown? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Prince or Michael Jackson? Uh, oh, man. From a musician standpoint, I have to go with Prince. With Michael yeah. Jackson for everything else. Yeah, but, but, but Prince, he, he did it all, man. He did it all. He I got a chance all. to play with him a few yeah. times. Okay. New Orleans or any city in the world to live? New Orleans. Boom, I knew that. Let's right see. away. Silly. Emeril Lagasse or Paul Perdome? <laughs> Emeril. <That's> my... <laughs> <Don't> Damn. You... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say, too. I've been with him all weekend. That's Listen, my it's guy. It's an honor, yeah. honor oh, for doing you. this. Thank you so and, much. Uh, what's the name of your new band we're going to play with here in a minute? Uh, well... That's, or is this your new band? What is this? What are we going to do here? So what we're going to do here is I called some of the guys that play in the New Breed Brass Band and the Rebirth Brass Band on the trumpet. That's Glenn Hall. And the New Breed Brass Band is backing us up. So I'm not actually in the band, but that's all my cousins and we hang out. So. Oh, that's so cool. Well, let's do this song. Thank you, Thank Sam. you for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're Thank a good you. man, man. Thank, Thank you very much. We're going to do a little uh, New Orleans classic. Bob Dylan recorded this song right here in New Orleans. A little thing called Rainy Day Women. Boom! Stop! 